Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Mutant Mayhem is the latest attempt at a TMNT film. And I think what's great about the Ninja Turtles is that there's always a new iteration of the heroes in a half shell for each generation. I think the Turtles have had a pretty good track record when it comes to the small screen, but they haven't always had such good luck when it comes to film. That is until now, because I think Mutant Mayhem is the best Ninja Turtles film we've ever had. Hello and welcome to Cinemaze and this is my review for Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Mutant Mayhem. And to get right into it, I thought this film was fantastic. Whether people like this version of the Ninja Turtles or not, no one can deny that this is a fantastic looking film. Following in the success of Spider-Verse, this film takes a unique approach with its animation style and it isn't just a classic CG animated film. This movie is oozing with artistic character. The movie looks hand drawn, at times it looked like a sketch or a doodle that a teenager might make, other times it looks comic bookie and it even kind of looked like claymation with the textures of the turtles. I think it is a fantastic look, clearly inspired by films like Spider-Verse and Puss in Boots 2 but with its own unique flair and not directly copying their art style. This style also allows for some really fluid action scenes which is important for a movie centered around martial arts. There's a particularly good action scene in the first half of the film in a montage where the turtles are learning to be heroes and I thought that was a phenomenal looking scene. Coming into this film from the trailers I saw the unique art style and I was excited Excited, but I was also worried because in this new renaissance of animated films like Spider-Verse or Puss in Boots The Last Wish, it's not just the animation that leveled up, but the maturity and emotional depth that comes with those stories. And I was worried that while this film was focusing on its animation, it wasn't going to nail this extra level of storytelling. Fortunately, I was wrong. While it doesn't quite reach the emotional highs and depths of Spider-Verse, this does have emotion running through it and a strong sense of heart. This movie is aiming at a slightly younger audience than those other films and the fact they were able to pack the level of heart and emotion that they did into this film was super impressive and I think it works for both adults and young children. Now onto the turtles themselves, this film succeeds in putting the teenage back in Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles with a fun youthful energy and appropriately aged voice actors and it really works, you feel the group's youth, immaturity but also their camaraderie and brotherhood and I think they nailed the team dynamic. I think what works here is that because these versions of the turtles feel so much younger it gives them more room to grow and the turtles haven't quite grown into the characters that we know them to be. They all have their usual traits, Leonardo leads, Donatello does machines, Raphael is cool but rude and Michelangelo is a party dude. They all have these characteristics in there but they haven't quite developed them as much as you might expect which allows this film to not only be an origin story for their background and them as a team but them as characters that we know and love. While Leonardo is told he's the leader of the team we start the movie and he isn't quite sure how to be the leader yet but we see him develop into this role. Donatello is definitely the nerdiest but because he feels so young it doesn't feel like he quite has the same scientific intellect that you would expect from him. Raphael has his rage but he hasn't quite honed it in yet and also his rage doesn't feel like as much of a problem as it can be in the other films. And Michelangelo wants to be the joker of the group but he isn't quite sure of himself enough yet to let it out. And we see these traits develop over the film which creates interesting arcs when we see the turtles become who we want them to be. And overall as a team they really work, they tease each other, they banter with each other and they also bicker. And they really do feel like a young group of brothers trying to work as a team and they have a great arc as a team and learning to accept themselves. This team aren't quite at the point of being able to say that famous saying I love being a turtle yet like we might expect them to but instead they're still coming to terms with who they are and their place in the world which ties into the heart that this film has and you can just tell the actors are having fun with this playing off each other improvising lines really bringing that youthful energy and being able to be teenagers. In terms of the other characters we have Splinter voiced by Jackie Chan. This might be one of the more unique takes on Master Splinter than we've ever seen. And this version of the character is definitely more focused on Splinter as a dad than Splinter as a ninja master. And I think that totally worked for the story they were telling here. And I really like the arc that he went on, but I can imagine that some people will wish it was a bit more of a traditional take. From what we find out in this movie, this version doesn't have ties to Japan or ninjutsu or Yoshi or Shredder, which are often some of the more interesting aspects of his character. And if they do plan to do Shredder in the future films, it's going to be weird to see how that dynamic works without their past history. This movie also really advertised itself having a star studded cast voicing the other mutants. They're all fun but they really don't have much to do and they mostly exist as jokes or to show the other mutants that exist in this world and I can imagine some fans being disappointed by them being wasted here. And then we have the villain Superfly who I thought was pretty good for a 
90 minute movie with so many characters, you don't get that much time for him because the focus is of course rightly on the Turtles, April and Splinter. But I thought they gave him enough to be a compelling enough villain and potentially scary enough for young children. Now what I do love is that they didn't go straight to Shredder. Almost every other Ninja Turtles movie goes straight to Shredder and then they keep him around for multiple films. I like that they didn't go straight to Shredder this time and instead he can be a villain that we build towards. It's like how every Fantastic Four movie goes straight to Doctor Doom or every Batman movie wants to do the Joker. Yes, we know they're the best and the most iconic villains, but I think it's better to build to them. I like that this film doesn't do Shredder, but it takes characters inspired by the Ninja Turtles lore. And Superfly is both a new character, but also one inspired by the lore. Clearly he's inspired by Baxter Stockfly that we got in the 80s animated show, but traditionally in the comics Baxter Stockman doesn't become a mutant fly, he's actually a cyborg villain. So I like that the door is kept open for a more comic accurate Baxter Stockman in the future films, but they do give us a Baxter Stockman fly-like character who has a backstory connected to Baxter Stockman. So clearly it's inspired by both the comics and the 80s show, and I think it works well. And I think that's something that this movie does a good job at, it takes influence from all the different versions of the Ninja Turtles. Coming from Seth Rogen as a producer, this is of course going to be mostly influenced by the 80s show and the 90s film, which means there's a lot of humour in here, a lot of pop culture references, and generally a light-hearted tone. But there is an edge to it. This version of New York feels a bit darker and grittier like you might get in the comics or that first 90s film. Some of the character designs are a bit freaky and disturbing like in the comics. Every version of the Turtles is different and I think that's a good thing and I think this does a good job of pulling different aspects from iterations of the Turtles while also adding its own spin on things. Because to keep this franchise fresh, it's always adapted to the times, and this very much feels like a new generation of the Turtles, but in a good way. This movie is paced really well. It's 90 minutes long, which feels like the perfect amount of time. It's not too short and it's not too long. They pack a lot into this runtime, so it's filled out really well. The first 15 to 20 minutes took me a while to get into it. A lot of that first bit of the movie was revealed in the marketing, and it was covering the origin story, which I already knew. But once the Turtles get out there and start being heroes, it moves fantastically. Coming into this film, I was worried it was going to be too humorous and too kind of modern cringy humor but I didn't find that to be the case luckily. A lot of the jokes were. Because it's modern I actually understood all of the pop culture references unlike when I watched the 90s films and some of those older references I just don't get. And most of the jokes landed and the jokes that didn't land still kind of work because it felt in character for these young awkward teenagers to be making bad jokes and they would often address that some of their jokes were bad. So yeah I really liked the tone of this film it got some laughs out of me the audience seemed to really like it and I think it really fit with the type of movie they were making. I can imagine some people having an issue with the tone here. It worked for me, but I think some people will find it too humorous or too different from the past versions of the Turtles. To me, every version of the Ninja Turtles has been unique and they've all had things which set them apart, whether that's darker or lighter tones, whether that's which turtle they focus on, which villains they use, but it's the traits of the Turtles and the brotherhood between them that really makes this franchise special and it's what's kept the franchise going all this time and this film still nails that aspect. I've seen some people moan about how modern this film feels, but almost every version of the Turtles feels extremely dated to its time with pop culture references and whether that's to focus on selling toys through the 80s or having a rap in that second 90s film or sending them to the future in the 2000s which was a really weird specific particular trend that happened around that time period but the turtles have always been tied down to their time period and so I don't think it's anything different here. Now there are some changes which I think fans won't like which I think are more valid. Remember when we all moaned that the turtles learnt ninjitsu from a book in the Michael Bay films? Well it's not much better here because they learn it through TV and YouTube and so the turtles and Splinter aren't quite the traditional ninja experts you would expect them to be. So while I love the focus on the teenage in Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles it shouldn't come at the expense of the ninja. Now where this film ends makes perfect sense for this movie. It was the perfect ending for the story and the arcs that were set up and they had to have happen in this way. However, it is a very different ending for the Ninja Turtles in a way that we've never seen before and it could take away from some of their characters going forwards and that's another thing I can imagine some people having issues with. Really it was the perfect way to end this story but it feels like a significantly big change especially for only the first film. It potentially feels more like an ending that you would get at the end of a full trilogy and so I'm interested to see where they go with this ending going forwards. I just really hope it doesn't detract from the characters and what makes them special. While this movie is clearly influenced by Spider-Man into the Spider-Verse, I actually think a more fair comparison would be Spider-Man Homecoming. After some movies which lost the favour of the fans and felt directed by producers who didn't understand the characters, we got some creators who clearly care about the characters and mythos to make a new, fresh, modern interpretation
version of the characters, filled with youth and humour, focused on telling new stories using new characters and villains. Sure, it makes some big changes which traditionalists might not like, but it stays true to the core of what makes these characters special. And it ends the film in a place that we've never seen these characters before, which could be risky or it could be exciting. Overall, I thought this was a fantastic version of the Ninja Turtles, which feels so fresh and new. It has a beautiful art style and a lot of love and care has clearly gone into this. It takes things in a new and interesting direction, but stays true to the core of these characters. While definitely aiming at a younger audience and not having the maturest story, it has enough heart and emotion to make it enjoyable for all. I think it will create a new generation of TMNT fans and I can't imagine anyone not liking this unless you are rigidly attached to a specific version of these characters. So if you're a Turtles fan, go into this remembering that the Ninja Turtles have always been reinvented for each generation. And while I don't think this is the best version of the Ninja Turtle characters we've ever seen, I do think this is the best Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle movie that we've ever got. Seriously, please go out and support this movie. This summer has been brutal financially for some films and so we want to support the good ones. Thanks for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please leave a like. It helps my channel out so much. Leave a comment saying what you thought about this film if you've seen it and let me know what your favorite version of the Ninja Turtles are. For me, it's the 2003 series, which I think adapts the comics really well while adding in some of the humor and fun from the 80s show. Be sure to subscribe to my channel for more reviews like this and videos on Marvel, DC, Star Wars or other amazing things going on in cinema. And for now, thank Thanks for watching Cinemaze.